So solar hot water, um, very different technology. This is a plumbing technology. Um, it's not an electrical technology. This basically heats water on your roof. It goes down to your solar hot water tank or a storage tank. Um, and so your hot water tank, instead of usually electric or natural gas to heat it, and it's a, usually a big consumer of your power, um, um, is just heated by the sun. And it's more efficient than generating electricity to heat the water. Um, so you have that kind of conversion. This directly heats the water. There's two different types. And first of all, for the tax credits and just for safety, always make sure um, solar hot water systems are rated. Solar Rating and Certification Corporation, the SRCC, you have to have certified panels to qualify for the tax credit. Um, and just safety-wise, you shouldn't put anything that hasn't been tested. This basically means this body has you know, tested this under extreme conditions, freezing, cold, all that kind of stuff to make sure it's going to work. In the 70s, when there were some good tax incentives and programs promoting this technology, there was a lot of people making their own, and there were little workshops and putting it on people's roofs, and there was problems that really set back the industry as far as reputation. So now there is a, a third party that makes sure that the quality is there, and I would only put that kind of stuff on your home. There's both ratings for your, your the, simply the system itself, uh, or for the um, collector yourself, or for the entire system. Um, either qualifies for the tax credit. This, uh, I mentioned, China is really want, sees this as the commercial future, and they're jumping on this much more aggressively than the U.S. They're by far the leader in solar hot water systems. This is a, a city in China. You can see there's solar hot water systems on every single building, as far as the eye can see. There are several cities in the world now, in Europe and in Asia, where you are not allowed to build a building without solar being part of it. It is against code. Um, at least a certain amount of their energy has to come from usually solar hot water, which is the cheaper option. We don't have anything on that scale yet in the U.S. Um, so here's your, here's your more basic, more traditional solar hot water panel, um, which would work very well here in, in East Tennessee. It does work very well here in East Tennessee. You can visit some of these. And here's a cutout that gives you kind of a... This technology has been pretty much the same now for some years. Um, you know, it's, in, you know, it's, you understand it. The, the glass, usually a specialty glass, that's you know will not reflect the sun, will absorb sunlight, hits a black surface. Um, you know, there's copper tubing; it heats up and flows in. I mean, not this is not high technology. It's very common sense. It's very dependable. It, it, there's no rocket science. Now, the other type that you're looking at that is a big market share today is evacuated tubes. And so this comes in, in little tubes. Um, it has a vacuum on the outside. A vacuum is the ultimate insulator. Um, you can't beat it. It's, it's tricky to keep, but uh, an insulated tube like that, so there's no water in here. It simply heats uh, a metal piece, usually in the middle, that goes in the water, gets fed through it, and it's, it's very hot. and uh, can work very well as well. So the evacuated tube, and here's a cutout of that, so you can kind of see where you have your, your vacuum and then your metal fin copper tubing going through, um, and your header where the liquid uh, flows that actually goes down into your hot water tank. So people always want to know, well, which is best then? Um, it, there are different advantages. Uh, flat plates are usually considered to have a longer life. Some products with evacuated tubes have had problems over years with the seal on the, evac on the glass tube. Um, but uh, evacuated tubes um, can produce better in cold, cloudy climates. Um, you know, so there, there's, there's pluses and minuses to both. Uh, I would just work, you know, both will work on your home. You know, um, a great guy we brought in recently to a workshop said both will heat, you know, a 60-gallon tank full of hot water. So, you know, that's what you want to get done. Um, so
So when you're looking at tilt, tilt is the handle a little different on PV. PV, you pretty much will have flat down. Um, th these can almost overheat. We basically, you, knew, you want to maximize solar hot water for winter time. Now the, the sun, I've, you know, in the summer goes higher up. In the winter, it's lower down in our altitude. And you really want the, the solar hot water collectors will get, you know, they don't need, they have no problem having too, almost too much hot in the summertime, but they can struggle in the wintertime if they're not oriented. So I would just recommend that you, when you're looking at, at tilt for a solar hot water system, you actually want to maximize for wintertime, because that's, that's when your system's going to struggle. The most cost-effective solar hot technology is if you have a pool, um, it's, it's very simple systems for heating your pool that are, I mean, really, there's no incentives for them because it's so cost effective, it's crazy not to. If you're looking at heating your pool, please look at solar pool heating. And you can also um, use it for heating. Um, you know, literally that will run tubes under your floors, often ceramic floors, that you can heat your house with it. I'm not going to talk about too much about those technologies, uh, but there are some installers that really do a lot of things. You can also look at um, examples of solar lighting. Um, these are, this is actually technology, hybrid solar lighting, that, that was invented right by here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, um, where the sun comes in, it gets um, concentrated, there's another reflective dish here, bounces off, goes into fiber optic cables, and it channels sunlight into commercial buildings. So in the middle of a commercial buildings, and it's really, I, I've been in rooms where you have this, and it's really interesting. You don't realize how odd the light is in here compared to outside. When these lights are actually shining sunlight down, it's completely different. The, every, the lights, the colors, everything, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Does it transmit any heat? No. It actually, the, the technology is designed to reflect off the heat. It's just sending the, the visible light spectrum in. Um, they tried actually having a concentrated PV in here too. So it actually be during, you know, capturing uh, electricity and then reflecting um, the visible light. But, and of course, many of us have these things here. Um, you, know, you don't want to have to run a cord out where you want some light. So you just have a little panel couple of these things, a very similar thing. This is kind of something for college campuses where you want light maybe for safety reasons. Transmission wires can be extremely expensive. So solar PV, in fact, that was a big part of the market until recently. In fact, the majority of the market was you know, a farmer or somebody wanted power and it was going to cost them, you know, half a million dollars to rent a transmission line to where you wanted power for a gate or something. Well, PV works great that way. You've probably seen it plenty of times on the side of the expressway. Um, you'll see PV panels out used by the Department of Transportation. You know, uh, it's going to take a five-mile extension cord to get power there, or they have to crank up a generator, which it constantly has to be coming every day and filling up. PV panel, they can set it there, put out a few batteries, and it can and it meet their needs most of the time. And there's a really simple technology, the solar tube. This works amazingly well. Uh, I know at least uh, Dr. Smith that's on the tour today has like five of these. Um, IM's Nature Center has a couple of these. You'd be amazed when a room that doesn't have, you know, good daylight, even on the north side, this little tube can really capture it, channel it down. And you can put, you know, you have a, a other type of light in there too, the, you know, and so, um, but most of the time, your light switch will be off, but light will be coming in the room through the solar tube. It's a cheap, very simple technology that is a, a great, you know, if you can't afford a, a solar PV system, but, you know, um, it's, a, it's a great, simple technology to use. 